Hey, it's Vicki, and today I am sharing some quarterly stats with you guys. Uh, yeah, we're into a new quarter already. What? Quarter one is already over for 2022. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about um, my kind of reading stats and things like that from the first three months of the year. And then also kind of do talk a little bit about some of my favorite books. From the first quarter and how my goals are going so let's dive in so to go through my stats i do have everything written down um, in my planner because this planner is awesome and has like a whole section for quarterly stuff first of all let's talk about the reading goal for 2022 as you guys know i well, you might not know, but <laughs> every year I always set my reading goal to 60 books because I just feel like that is a very comfortable number and I don't want to put any pressure on myself. And I usually end up raising it uh, as the year goes on, but uh, so far I'm keeping it at, at 60. And so far this year I have read 28 books. So I'm already almost halfway there, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> Granted, a lot of the books that I read in the first quarter were very short, like under 300 pages, and or they were, you know, middle grade books, which are typically easier for me to read. So uh, that's probably why that number is what it is. I don't imagine it will be higher than that in ongoing quarters, but we shall see. All right, so total pages I've read in first quarter was 8,560, which I feel like is pretty good. I feel like... That's more than I normally do. I don't know though. Um, 18 of the 28 books were print books. Uh, one was an ebook, <laughs> and nine were audiobooks. And then I also had three rereads, which were my goosebumps readings uh, that I did for middle grade March. Those were all rereads. Um, and I had three DNFs. All right, so if we start talking about genre breakdowns, the biggest genre for me this quarter, which is not a surprise because of middle grade March, was middle grade. I read nine middle grade books. Uh, so yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> um, the next biggest though was, it looks like, was nonfiction. I had four of those, uh, which I feel like, I, I feel like looking back that I didn't read that much nonfiction, but I guess I did. Um, I had also, let's see, three historical fictions, three YAs, which I'm finding this year I am definitely reading more YA than I normally do. I don't know what it is. I'm in a YA mood, I guess. But yeah, I've read three YA books. Uh, and then I have two horror books, which is pretty low, actually, for me. Two thrillers, or no, I'm sorry, one thriller. One poetry, one sci-fi, one graphic novel, and one classic. So pretty much like right on brand with me, my genres are like all over the place, which is totally fine. I totally love that about myself. So that's great. And so far uh, this year, this first quarter, I had five five-star reads. So considering I read 28 things and had five five-star reads, it's not a ton, but I also am known to be a little stingy with my five-star ratings. I don't just hand them out. Uh, you know, it kind of takes a lot for a book to get that rating from me. So Five isn't crazy. Um, I obviously loved all five of those books, and so that's why they were five stars. But if I had to pick a favorite for the quarter, it was definitely The Storyteller by Dave Grohl, which was his memoir. And especially now with Taylor Hawkins passing away, um, the drummer for the Foo Fighters, and basically Dave Grohl's best buddy, it just makes the book even more, I don't know, kind of sad, but also sort of special uh, because he does talk about him in that book. So. But that book was just so good, just so good, uh, funny, inspiring, um, humble, all of it. Just It was just one of those books that was just so joyous to me and uh, I just love reading about people um, and their passions like that. And you can just tell Dave Grohl just like lives and breathes for music and yeah, his book is awesome. So if you haven't read it, you definitely should. All right, so let's go ahead and break down the goals. Let's do a goal check-in. I had, how many goals did I have for this year? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight goals. The first one, of course, being to read 60 books. And as you guys know, like I said, I've read 28, so I'm well on my way to meeting that goal. <laughs> 
And like I said, I will likely up that number as the year goes on. So right now though, I am totally killing it. I also had a goal to read more from my Kindle and yeah, I totally sucked at that one. I've only read one book on my Kindle and it was an ARC. <laughs> so I don't know what was going on there, but I'm really gonna try this quarter, quarter two, to make my Kindle more of a priority because I do have so many great books on there. When I go through it, I'm like, why do I forget about this all the time? I don't know, I don't know, but I'm definitely gonna try to make that a focus for quarter two. I also wanted to read more poetry in 2022, and so far, I think I've done okay. I've technically read one poetry like collection, um, but during middle grade March, I did read two books that were also like told in verse. They weren't strict, I, I wouldn't say were strict poetry collections, but they were verse. Um, and I definitely have, I just purchased a poetry collection um, for myself for my birthday that, you know, obviously I wanna read soon. And I have a couple even on my physical TBR shelf that I wanna read. And I think even this month here in April with it being poetry month, I really should try to knock out a poetry collection. So maybe I will try to do that. But so far that goal I think is going well uh, because last year I think I read two poetry collections. And so to read more technically, if I wanna be technical, I need to read three. So I think I think I'm doing okay there. I also had a like a goal to read a, like I always make a big book sort of goal. Like I always pick a big book to read every year. And this year I picked The Terror by Dan Simmons and I had intended to read that one in the winter time uh, and it didn't happen. So now I will probably have to save it for the end of the year because it's definitely a book that I want to read in winter because it is set in the Arctic. And so I'm one of those people where I like my settings to sort of mimic uh, what's currently the setting <laughs> where I live. So yeah, so that one's gonna get pushed probably to the end of the year. I always have a goal every year to read more from my shelves uh, because I do have, you know, quite a few unread books here <laughs> in my home library. And I always wanna try to make sure I prioritize those when I can. And so of the 28 books uh, that I read in this quarter, 19 of them were ones that I pulled off of my shelves. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, it could be better, but I did have just so many really great library loans <laughs> this quarter, books that I just had put on hold at the library or whatever, and or were even ones that were sort of impulse uh, checkouts that I do sometimes. And so, you know, it would be nice though to get a little more off my shelves every quarter, but I think that 19 out of 28 isn't bad. And I always also make a goal to read three classics every year, and I've read one so far. I read The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. It was not my favorite, I gave it two stars, but it's, you know, I can check it off my list of things I've read. And so yeah, I've, I've read one of three. I feel like that goal is still obviously very attainable though. The next goal I'm I'm not doing so great on, and I'm a little I'm a little mad at myself for it. But I made a goal to read five Stephen King books, and I'm currently reading one, so it's in progress, and that's it. In the whole first quarter I didn't complete a Stephen King book, so yeah. But uh, I'm currently uh, reading Nightmares and Dreamscapes, which is a short story collection. Um, I've been kind of taking my time with it and just kind of picking it up at random when I feel like just reading a quick short story. Uh, and it's going good. Um, and, but I know like he has a new book coming out in the fall uh, that will count. And I've recently hauled a couple that I'm planning to read soon. So it's like I need to just, you know, make sure that I prioritize them. Because a lot of times, even though it's a goal I make, I always forget about Stephen King. Uh, so... Yeah, that's that's a work in progress. And then the last goal that I had, I completed, and that is to read three Goosebumps books. So yes, I did it. I read three Goosebumps books in middle grade, excuse me, in middle grade March. And so yeah, I can officially check off that goal. And like I said um, in the vlog that I did where I read those three Goosebumps books, I don't think I'm going to make that a goal every year anymore. I had this idea um, a year or two ago where I was like, oh, I'm going to reread all the Goosebumps books. I think that'll be super fun, super nostalgic. And now I've kind of changed my mind on it and I don't really want to read them all. <laughs> I kind of just want to read the ones that I want to read. 
read them out of order, whatever. So uh, that's probably not going to be a goal I put on for next year. Um, but yeah, I am happy that I completed it. And then I have three books that I'm hoping I need to read, hopefully, um, in the next quarter. It's just kind of a nice little goal to have. Two of them, it's because I borrowed them from my grandma, and so I feel like I need to read them so that I can give them back to her. Um, the Let me go grab them really quick. So the first one that uh, my grandma lent to me is one that she read and just thought it was really good, and so she wanted to pass it on to me, and that's Washington Black by Essie Adugayan, I think is how you say that. I'm, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm sorry. Um, but this is about a young boy named George Washington Black, but he goes by Wash. And he is, I believe he is a slave, yes. Um, and somehow he comes to be a servant to a man and they kind of form like a friendship, I guess, or something. But then Wash is accused of, I wanna say murder? And so him and his uh, master, I guess, uh, are on the run and they kind of like travel all over the world and stuff. So I don't know. She said it was really good. And I definitely heard of this um, and have heard good things about it. So I figured why not? Yeah, I'll, I'll try it out. And then the other one that she lent me is Don't Cry For Me by Daniel Black. And this is uh, about a guy named Jacob who is dying. Um, he's an old man and he is writing a letter to his son Isaac who has been estranged for many years uh, and he's writing this letter to him basically telling him things about himself that maybe he wanted him to know uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, they had a they have had a strained relationship because Isaac is gay and Jacob was not supportive of that or anything and so that was you know, a part of their, um, the reason for their split. Uh, so yeah, this is probably going to be really sad, <laughs> but it just, it sounds like something I would really like. So I'm excited about it. And then the last book that I have on my, like, to read list, like priority for next quarter is Bad Blood, uh, Secrets and Lies and a Silicon Valley Startup by John Kerry. I have had this book on my shelves for like probably three years now. And I, I don't know why I haven't read this. I've heard it is amazing. <laughs> it sounds so fascinating to me. So I have to prioritize it. Um, if you guys don't know what this is about, this is about Elizabeth Holmes, um, who has had a lot of like stuff in the media lately. Um, and then also there's a, is it on Hulu? There's a Hulu like mini series about her. But basically she started this company called Fer Feranos, is that what it was called? Theranos? Why can I not think of what it is? Yes, yes Theranos, gosh. Anyways, she started this company where um, they apparently had this technology where they could get a very, very small amount of blood from someone and be able to tell all sorts of like health information about them. Because as you know, when, now, now when you like have go for blood testing and stuff, they have to take quite a lot to be able to test for various things. And apparently she said that her company had this technology where you, they only needed like a drop or something. And it turns out it was like all a lie. Um, and so yeah, the, this whole story is just fascinating to me and I'm like, why haven't I read this yet? So yes, I am definitely prioritizing this in quarter two. All right guys, so those are all my quarterly stats. That's how quarter one went for me. Um, I think so far I'm on track with everything. I've read some pretty good books. I've been reading a lot. So yeah, all in all, I really don't have any complaints. Uh, let me know down below. Um, if you do stats, uh, tell me about them. I would love to know. Uh, tell me what your favorite book was from quarter one, because that is always fun to hear. So okay, that's it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week, and I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.